Hello there, and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled, Where is the blank command? My name is Tim Warner, I'm your instructor, and I'm a PowerShell.org video contributor. What we're doing in this video series is working through the DevOps Collective's The Big Book of PowerShell Gotchas. This is available for fun and for free online. Look at the shorty URL down at the bottom for the quick link. One thing I want to call out explicitly is that this short link I created is unencrypted HTTP. So it's not only a case sensitive URL, but also there's no HTTPS. I received a couple messages from viewers concerning this short URL. So I wanted to go over that with you quickly. Of course, today we're doing element three. Where is the blank command from the big book of PowerShell gotchas? Let's take a look at our problem statement for today. The problem is, I've installed the latest PowerShell version. You've downloaded the Windows Management Framework, WMF, and you've installed it on your system, but you're just not finding the command or commands that you're expecting to find. This is the heart of the problem, and we're going to solve it right now. All right, let's do this. The script file that we're working with today is called where.ps1, and I'll give you the download link at the end of this presentation. The head of the script is usually the same. I have some metadata and then a section setting up the environment. If I run PS version table .ps version, you can see that I'm running the WMF 5.0 release to manufacturing. Now let's get into the heart of the matter. I'm working from a Windows 8.1 Enterprise Edition workgroup computer, and we may wonder, for instance, how many PowerShell commands are available on your system. So on line 25, we're running get command into measure object, which will count them up and display a number of properties, but I'm selecting out only the count property so we can just get a raw number. On my system, I have 3,668 PowerShell commands available to me. If you run the same pipeline on your system, I'd bet you $20 that you have a different count. And that's probably the case regardless of the system you're on. There's a good reason for that, actually. If you're wondering what the core PowerShell commands are, that's definitely a legitimate question. Have you ever heard RTFM? That's read the friendly manual. You can always pop out to the Microsoft Developer Network and the PowerShell documentation and look in terms of what's new and what's changed with each PowerShell version. The documentation I found is steadily increasing in quality, and you should get your answers very quickly that way. If you want to look at the core PowerShell commands that are currently installed on your system, one starting point that I developed is in line 30, where we're taking get command, we're selecting out only the module property, grabbing only unique instances so we don't get repetition, and then we do a where object filter, looking only for modules that have the name microsoft.powershell.something. You see the wildcard operator and the like fuzzy match operator. And then at the end, I'm going to do an alphabetical sort on that property. Quite a long hunk and one-liner, but it'll get us to where we need to be. And it's a relatively short list, as you can see. The Big Daddy core PowerShell module isn't a module at all, but an old school snap-in. If we run just get snap-in with no other parameters, I don't have any first or third party snap-ins loaded elsewhere. So all I have right now is the Microsoft.PowerShell.Core DLL. And that's, as I call it affectionately, the big daddy source of the core PowerShell commands. But the real heart and soul of this gotcha is separating the PowerShell core commands that ship with WMF and the operating system features and first and third party software that you may have installed. Don't get confused. If you don't see a particular command on a server, it's likely that you don't have that server roller feature installed that gives you that PowerShell interface. You see what I mean? Even on a desktop Windows system like this Windows 8.1 box I'm on right now, if I run get command against the new VM command, I get a bunch of red error text. This may be confusing because, as you know, let me quickly open the Windows optional features dialog box, client Hyper-V is part of the Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 Enterprise Edition feature set. But because I haven't loaded these components yet, I don't have access to those commandlets. They're, in a sense, lying dormant, if that makes sense. I do a lot of work with Microsoft Azure, and as such, I've installed the Azure PowerShell modules such that we can expect a get command against new Azure VM returns results as expected. You see the point? I have a Windows Server 2016 domain controller in my environment, 
and I believe I've already defined my credential and this TP5 variable. I'm creating a new stored PS session against the server using my alternate credential, and I give it the friendly name TP session, and then I can use the pipeline to take that object and push it into enter PS session. Now that I'm connected to that server, I can verify that. Let me do a CLS and host name. I can, for instance, run get PS drive to get a list of different PS drive providers. And this is where you're going to start to see some, some real differences on servers depending upon what you have installed. These look like the pretty standard providers, alias, cert, one for each volume, etc. But watch this. If I call a command like get command with the name get ad user, because this is a domain controller, PowerShell module autoloading will now make all of those commandlets, including the Active Directory PS drive, available to us now. Let me do a cd backslash to get to the root of drive C and do a clear host just to give us some more room to work with. And if we do another get PS drive, you'll now see that we have an AD drive that enables us to tap into the Active Directory store through Windows PowerShell. You see the point? Let me exit my PS session. And I have some additional code here just if you're interested. PS sessions are a really awesome way to establish remote management connections in Windows PowerShell. And the reason why creating a variable to new PS session is cool is because we can then access that session. We can hang it up, we can disconnect it, reconnect it, and even connect to it from another machine on our network. Look in the PowerShell documentation for disconnected sessions. If you want more information on disconnected sessions, just do a search online or by looking at the PowerShell help files themselves. Let me finish this demonstration with my final region here, where I just give you some additional points to ponder, some other sources of discovering new PowerShell commands that are separate from the core command libraries. What I've done is place this bullet list in what's called a here string. It's a convenient way to define a string that's broken over multiple lines for easier reading. But at any rate, if you have the remote server administration tools or RSAT tools installed on your machine, that's going to give you access to the Active Directory PS drive and so on. If you install the SharePoint management shell, that's going to give you the SharePoint tools, although that can be a little tricky to get running on an administrative workstation, come to think of it. SQL Server does allow you to explicitly install the client tools, which gives you the SQL Server PS drive and the SQL PS PowerShell commands. And then, as I already showed you, the Microsoft Azure, Azure AD modules, the SharePoint Online modules. Once you install those, those commands become available on that system. Thanks a lot for joining us for this presentation. The script file that I used in the demo can be found at my website at timwarnertech.com forward slash where.zip, W-H-E-R-E. This video series is sourced at youtube.com forward slash PowerShell org. The community site for PowerShell org is, reasonably enough, powershell.org. If you'd like to contact me for any reason, my work email address is timothy-warner at pluralsite.com. I'm also on Twitter at techtrainertim. Thanks again and happy PowerShelling.